Good morning, everyone. It's Miss Kristen from the library. I'm so excited to be here this morning to do story time with you. And I've got a lot of fun books and some fun songs. And today we're going to be talking about favorite things. And I know at home, probably somewhere, you have a very favorite thing. It might be a stuffed animal or a doll or a toy or a blanket or something that you just really, really, really love. And you would hate for it to go missing. Well, Miss Kristen has something that she wears every single day and it's on my hand and this is my green ring that I bought when I got done with school and I have a fun story to tell about it. So one day I was at the library, not this library, a different library. I was at a different library and I was typing on my computer and my ring was just moving around too much so I took it off. Well, Miss Kristen didn't remember and I accidentally left my ring at the library, but I didn't know this. And so I went home and I looked everywhere and my ring was missing and I was super, super, super sad. And then like three years later, Miss Kristen got an email and it was from the librarian. And she said, are you missing a green ring? And I got so excited. So my ring spent three years living it up in the library. I don't know what she was doing. She was reading books. She was, she was typing on the computer. I don't even know. I don't know. She was making a blog. She was doing all kinds of fun stuff. She was seeing all the fun people coming in and out of the library for three whole years. She was there all by herself. And then I got her back and now I'm so excited. I don't want her to go missing again. And so I wear her every single day. And that is Miss Kristen's favorite thing. So my first song that I have to sing is about books because our first, our first book is going to be about a book. And the song is I Love Books, and it goes like this. I love books and they love me. I get them free at the library. Read them once, read them twice. Library books are oh so nice. Do you want to try it? Here we go. I love books and they love me. I get them free at the library. Read them once, read them twice. Library books are oh so nice. And here is my very first book. It is Bob Steak. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. My pet book. A pet book? What? How can a book be a pet? We're going to find out. Most pets, you know, are cats and dogs. Go out and take a look. But there's a boy in Smarty Town whose pet is a little book. He never cared for puppy dogs and kittens made him sneezy. He pleaded with his mom and dad, I want a pet that's easy. A book would make the perfect pet, he heard his mother say. And dad had read that no pet book had ever run away. So they strolled right past the pet store to shop with books for sale. No one had whiskers, fur, or fleas, or a waggly little tail. How could the boy pick out just one? Too tough for this book lover. But then a small book caught his eye. A frisky red hardcover. Of all the books within the store, he liked this one a lot. The page pages crisp, the printing fine, its spine so very taut and straight. He didn't need to give his pet a name like Rex or Spot. It wouldn't answer anyway, and so the book was bought. Can you see what his mom has for him? A little leash for his book. <laughs> so cute. It never ate, it never drank. It, it couldn't do a trick. It never shed, it had no fleas. It couldn't fetch a stick. It never needed bathing, and its ears would never droop. And best of all, that little pet, it didn't even poop! <laughs> a better pet you couldn't have for graceful evening strolls. It wasn't like those ill-bred dogs that drink from toilet bowls. <laughs> or like a cat that always sleeps or won't turn off its purr. A pet book never makes a sound and it doesn't lick its fur. Hold on one sec, I have to do something to my computer. Sorry. 
had a pop up. They're so annoying. Inside the book were many tales of awesomeness and glory. The boy imagined as he read that he was in the story. Look at all the adventures he's having. The boy would leave his pet book home when off to school he'd go. But one day when the boy returned, the book was gone. Oh no! He ran away, he ran away! The boy began to bleat. How could a pet book run away without a pair of feet? The maid could hear the crying boy. That sound was such a rarity. Uh, I think I know what happened. Oh, I gave your book to charity. While cleaning out the house of junk, the maid had grabbed a box and filled it full of household things like cups and plates and socks. The pet book must have simply been swept up while on the floor. And then the maid took box and all straight to the old thrift store. They raced downtown in hopes that they would find it on a shelf, just sitting there and waiting near a dusty Christmas elf. It wasn't hanging with the coats or sitting with the chairs. The pet book wasn't with the lamps or snoozing with stuffed bears. Of course they went through all the books, the new ones and the old. The pet book wasn't anywhere. It must have just been sold. Oh no. They slumped down on the must on a musty couch and in unison they cried. But then the maid leaned in and asked, Hmm, where would a pet book hide? The boy had never thought of that. He broke into a smile. He remembered something he had seen in the dog and cat stuff aisle. If I were just a scared pet book, I'd likely sneak in there. Perhaps the dark would help me hide and make me disappear. Then with his hand, the boy reached in to fill around each nook, and then he grabbed it out to see he'd found his lost pet book. They drove back home, the three of them. The pet book checked for wear. The boy was quite relieved to find not one torn page was there. A crazy day they'd had indeed. Yet the story ended well, and now the book, now the boy and his pet book had their very own tale to tell. The boy's mom gently asked him how a book could bring such joy. It's cause every book's a friend, said the yawning little boy. His eyes were sleepy from the search and all the time it took, but now the boy could dream all night with his lost and found pet book. Oh, what a cute book. Oh, I loved it so much. It made me think of the story about how I lost my ring. And as it was up here getting ready for the video, I thought about how there's so many books in the world. And if I had to pet, pick a pet book, which book would I pet? And then it came to me. And this is, this is not a little kid's book. This is when for you and you get older and you get to read the chapter books. But this is Miss Kristen's most fun favorite book, Harriet the Spy. She goes on all kinds of adventures in the city and she spies on people. It is so fantastic and amazing. I love it. So my next book is going to be about grandma. So I have a song about grandmas. You are my grandma, my wonderful grandma. You make me happy when I'm with you. You give good hugs and you give good kisses. Hope I know how much I love you. So why would we be talking about grandmas and favorite things? Although some people do have a grandma that's their favorite person. This is about Grandma's Purse by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Let's see what's happening in Grandma's Purse. Today, my grandma Mimi is coming to visit. When Mimi comes over, she always has a new treasure to share. And no matter what it, it is, it comes from the inside of her purse. 
I can't look away from it. It must be full of some magical things. All of the things that make my grandma Mimi. Will you show me what's inside? Yes, she will. I keep all kinds of things in my purse. You never know what you'll want to have with you. This is a practical grandma. I use my mirror to see myself before you see me. I use it to put on my lipstick as my lip, so my lips are ready to give you a big kiss. Mwah! And you have your smell good, Mimi laughs. Yes, I use my smell good, so you know I was here even after I go home. I keep extra earrings in my purse in case I want to feel extra fancy. And I keep my hairpins for my hair. They keep my hair just so. This coin purse holds my coins, of course, but it also holds memories. Your grandfather brought it back from Japan for me. So when I do something small, like put away change, I do something big and think of him too. Candy! You never know when you'll need a little treat. Mimi always passes me a piece of candy to suck on in church, right when I start having a hard time paying attention to the pastor. Your phone looks like a toy. It has my friend's phone numbers on it. What else would I need it for? My glasses help me see your pretty face, and this scarf can keep me warm. Or give me a cushion if I want to rest my head, or it can make me feel fancy if my ear earrings don't do it on their own. So this is how Mimi gets to be Mimi. With everything in her purse, I can be Mimi too. <laughs> how cute she looks, especially in those big glasses. Toward the bottom of the bag, I find a sleeve of pictures. At first, I only recognize one, but Mimi shows me who's who in the others. There's Mimi a long time ago when she married Papa and another of my mom when she was my age. She looks like me, only without all of Mimi's accessories. There's one more thing at the very bottom. I couldn't see it until we took out all of Mimi's treasures one by one. It's big and it has my name on it. A purse of my own. And I know what will go in first. Oh, a picture of her and her grandma. Now she has a place to store all of her favorite things just like her grandma has. All right, I have my last song and it is about also losing something. I'm sorry to say, but sometimes we don't know what things are our favorite until we lose them and then we get them back and we're so excited that they're back. So here's my song. It goes like this. A, B, C, D, E. I lost my bunny for me. F, G, H, I, J. Maybe someone put him away. K, L, M, N, O. I wonder how far my bunny would go. P, Q, R, S, T. Isn't there someone who will help me? U, V, W, X, Y. I think I'll sit right here and cry. Z, 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 Z. Oh, I found him. I'm happy. So talking about bunnies and missing your bunny, we have to read Nuffle Bunny, A Cautionary Tale by Mo Willems. I love the pictures in this book. It's so fun. Not long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. There they go. Trixie and her daddy went down the block, through the park, past the school, and into the laundromat. 
Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. I don't know if Trixie's helping that much, but she's trying to help. She even got to put money in the machine. Then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, I go flaggle clobble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. I, I go flaggle clobble, said Trixie again. Baggle flabble, bumble flappy. Slurp. Now, please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled, Wah! She went boneless. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. He does not look happy going up the stairs. As soon as Trixie's mommy opened the door, she asked, where's Nuffle Bunny? <gasps> the whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park. They zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Nuffle Bunny and looked and looked and looked but Nuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's daddy decided to look harder and tell Nuffle Bunny. And those were the first words that Trixie ever said. Oh, it's a happy ending. I love it. All right. That's all the stories that I have for today. I hope that you had fun and I hope that you have fun today playing with your favorite thing. I hope you have a really good day and thanks for coming to story time and I will see you next week. Now, next week we're going to be doing um, viewer requests. So if there's any book that you want Miss Kristen to read, go ahead and send me a message so that I know which books that you want to hear. Or maybe you don't know which book, but maybe you just like, um, dogs or dinosaurs or pirates or I don't know anything that you want to hear about in a book. Just go ahead and send me a message and I will try to get some books on that subject. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye.